When we start learning mechanics, we're introduced to the idea of a point mass. It would have mass m and, say, velocity v. And if we picture fluids as a collection of molecules, we can imagine them moving around and occasionally bumping into each other. So here a molecule with speed v1 is bumping into a molecule with a speed v2 and colliding elastically. In order to model a fluid like this, we would need to know the velocities and the positions of all the molecules and each velocity is held by each molecule. And to describe this system, we would use ordinary derivatives. For example, vi is equal to ordinary dxi, where x is the displacement, by ordinary dt. Now, you can model fluids like this, but it's impractical for more than a few million molecules. And given the number of molecules that really exist in most systems that we want to look at, we need to find another technique. That technique is the continuum approach, and in the continuum approach, properties are held at points in space rather than by individual molecules. So I define a coordinate system x, y. I define a region of space with width delta x and height delta y. And I say that the average velocity inside this volume of space is v, a vector field, as a function of x and y. It's a vector field that depends on the position x, y. And similarly, the average velocity in the box just above has a value, and it is given by the velocity at the first box, xy, plus the partial derivative dv by dy, where v is a vector, keeping x constant times the distance moved in the y direction, delta y. And this is a partial derivative. The key point is that because properties are held at points in space, we need to distinguish between how they vary in one direction in space from how they vary in another direction in space. And so we use the language of partial derivatives. And this is a crucial conceptual leap for physicists and engineers. A famous physicist said, the application of Newton's mechanics to continuously distributed masses led inevitably to the discovery and application of partial differential equations, which in their turn first provided the language for the lords of the field theory. And that physicist was, of course, Albert Einstein. And I think you cannot really understand fluid mechanics until you have made this conceptual leap.